We're going to look at a scenario that your book calls the side splitter theorem, or the side splitter concept, I suppose. And, and the situation that you're going to see for the side splitter is a situation where you have a line that's dividing a triangle into parts, and that line has to be parallel to the base of the triangle, or at least parallel to some side of the triangle. And the idea is very straightforward, and that is that this line is going to divide the left-hand side of the triangle in the same ratio that it divides the right-hand side of the triangle. All right? And it allows us to set up all kinds of different proportions that can be solved. Uh, a lot of them can be very basic, but there, there are a lot of possibilities. Okay? The basic concept would be that the upper part over the lower part for the left is equal to the upper part over the lower part for the right. Um, I would encourage you to label your proportions when you set them up. Uh, for example, I'm doing upper part over lower part, so 15 over 5 would be equal to 18 over x, okay? And again, you may be able to see the proportional relationships here in some cases, you may not in others. Uh, for example, you can see here this upper part is three times as long as the lower part. That same thing is going to hold on the other side. This is going to be three times as long as that, that segment, all right? Um, and so anyway, you can cross multiply here and solve. Uh, in this case, 5 times 18 is 90. Uh, that's going to be equal to x times 15. And x in this particular case is going to end up being 6. Okay. However, there are lots of other proportions that you could set up here. Um, you could do, uh, well, certainly you could do lower over upper. Uh, you could do 5 over 15 is equal to lower over upper, uh, 8 x over 18, uh, so you'd have a one-third relationship here. 6 over 18 would give you one-third uh, on the other side. Um, you can do a part compared to a whole. Um, so for example, you could do the upper side compared to the whole. Okay, An upper side of 15 could be compared to a whole side of 20 if you add these together. Okay. This ratio here is going to be the same as the upper part here compared to the whole. Uh, that would be 18. And then the whole, we would have to add these two together. Uh, 18 plus x would be that length. And uh, you could fill that in and you could cross multiply. And of course, you'd still end up getting a length of 6 for x there. Uh, you could do the lower part over the whole. You could do 5 over 20 equals x over 18 plus x. Okay? Um, you can also do ratios from left to right. So the ratio from the left to the right is going to be the same as the ratio of the piece from the left to the right. So you could do uh, something like left over right, uh, 15 over 18. If you simplify that down, that's a 5 sixths ratio. Uh, is going to be equal to 5 over x. And of course, uh, an answer of 6 there would also end up giving you that same ratio. Okay, uh, you could do 18 over 15 equals x over 5. You could do 18 plus x over 20. In other words, the right hand full side over the left hand full side equals the right hand upper part over the left hand upper part. Uh, lots of different ratios that you can compare. Um, a lot of times I'll decide what comparison I do based on the numbers I'm given. So, um, you know, that can kind of vary from problem to problem. One of the things you've got to be careful about when you're dealing with the side splitter relationship is what's not side splitter, all right? Uh, make sure, part of the reason I use this term is to reinforce the idea, these two sides have to be split, okay? Um, for example, I've got a, a second problem here. Uh, let's say that this length was, let's draw this a little bit more scale here. Let's say that I had a line parallel to the base here. Let's say that I had a 4 here, an 8 here, a 5 here, and an x here, okay? Resist the urge to just stick four numbers in a proportion, okay? You really need to think about what you're comparing. Um, so for example, if I do an upper part of a segment divided by a lower part of a segment, I need to compare an upper part that's not an upper part, that's an entire sign, okay? Um, over a lower part, that's also an entire sign, okay? Um, you know, I'm not doing an upper part of the segment compared to another upper part of the segment and a lower part compared to another lower part that corresponds. Um, now, if you're looking at that and you're saying, what is he talking about? This doesn't make any sense. Break it up into two separate triangles, okay? These two triangles will be similar 
by angle angle. Your corresponding angles are going to be congruent. Uh, you've got a shared angle up here at the top. Okay? If you draw those triangles separately, what you've really got here is that upper triangle with a side of 4 and a side of 5. And for the lower triangle, it's not a side of 8 and a side of x. It's a side of 12. Okay? 4 is a whole side of a triangle. It's got to match up with the whole corresponding side of a triangle. Um, and then uh, your missing side down here is going to be x. Okay? Now you can set up a proportion. Um, you can set up a scale factor. There's a 4 to 12 scale factor here. Uh, which just tells you every four units in the one triangle is equal to 12 in the other. In other words, this triangle is triple the size of this triangle. So small over large equals small over large. Uh, you can cross multiply it at that point. I think you'd end up finding out that x is equal to 15. Okay? Um, lots of other proportions you could also do here. Um, you could compare corresponding parts within the two triangles. You could do like left over base is equal to left over base. Uh, you could do base over left is equal to base over left. Um, you know, the big triangle over the small triangle part is equal to a big triangle part over the small triangle part. Lots of different possible proportions that can be created. But again, be careful when you're dealing with the size split relationship. All right? Um, let's look at one more example that can happen. So sometimes you may have to do a little bit of relabeling. And in this particular case, uh, let's say that this length is, this upper length here is 5, and this lower length is 4. And let's say that I'm given this entire length over here, okay? So I am given the full side of this triangle. Uh, I'm given an upper side of this triangle. I'm given a lower piece, but notice I don't have a lower piece that matches up over here. I don't have an upper piece that matches up over there, okay? This could be side splitter, but currently I don't have the information to be able to do it. So um, let's, let's say that I was asked to find the length of the upper segment here, okay? I can call that x, all right? You've got a couple different possibilities. You could look at the two things that you have over here. You've got an upper piece and you have a hole, okay? So we can do a comparison between the upper part and the hole. Uh, we could say the upper part is x when the lower when the whole part is 18, okay? I need to compare it to the upper part and the whole for the other side. And because I have the numbers, it's really easy just to figure out that that whole side length is 9, all right? Uh, so the upper part is 5 when the whole is 9, okay? We have a 5 over 9 ratio there. Um, you might be able to see uh, the relationship here. If you notice, um, the triangle side lengths are being doubled from this side over to this side. So. 5 is going to be doubled to be 10, or you could cross multiply and, and you could solve that. Okay? However, if you like comparing upper over lower equals upper over lower, uh, if you want to stick to that consistent pattern, there are also other ways that you can relabel things. Uh, you could, for example, say that this whole side is 18, this side is x. You could subtract x from 18, and you could write this side length as 18 minus x. Now, you can do an upper over lower kind of comparison. 5 over 4 is equal to x over 18 minus x. Um, I don't love this setup because you've got a little more complicated expression here. Uh, it's going to take a little bit more work. 5 times 18, I believe, is 90 minus 5x when you multiply those. Uh, it's going to be equal to 4x. Um, you're going to end up with 9x equals 90, and x is still going to end up equal to 10 when you solve that equation. Uh, but there are different ways to do this. So keep in mind, you can you know, add segments together to get a representation for a whole segment. You can subtract segments to get um, an expression for a part of a segment as well. Lots of different possibilities with the side splitter theorem.